Today we're going to inspect the hydraulic clamp rod assembly in your Gilson testing screen. The Gilson testing screens are rugged and tough machines that will provide years of service if installed and maintained correctly. With Gilson testing screens with hydraulic clamping, the hydraulic clamp rods fit through a series of guide bearings and draw the separator parts together to clamp the screen trays in place for efficient screening operation. If your machine appears to clamp the screen trays improperly, the unit's clamp rod assembly guide bearings may be worn. To inspect the hydraulic clamp rod assembly on your Gilson testing screen, you first disconnect the testing screen from its power source. Remove the pump handle grip. Next, remove the top and side covers to the machine and safely set them aside. Note the short load line to the electronic controller. Rest the side cover aside as to avoid placing stress on the load line. While the cover is open, it is important to check for leaked hydraulic fluid, excessively worn parts, and loose or damaged drive belts. Now, return the pump handle grip to the pump handle. Next, clean the interior of the unit as to prevent foreign material from falling into the pump and contaminating the oil later. To check for wear in the guide bearings, apply pressure to the hydraulic cylinders with your hand, front to back and side to side. If a cylinder can move more than 1 32ths of an inch in any direction, you should replace the guide bearings in the hydraulic clamp rod assembly. To continue, we need to remove the hydraulic cylinder to access the clamp rod assembly. First, we drain the pump system of hydraulic oil by disconnecting the hose from one of the hydraulic cylinders, leaving the other end of the hose connected to the pump. Place the free end of the hose into a clean container at a level that will allow gravity to empty the system of hydraulic oil. Pump the pump handle slowly to drain the hydraulic oil from the system. Now we're going to take the pump cover off the pump. Observe the hydraulic pump and the position of the pump cover. The bottom of the vent in the pump cover has a bevel that must face the front of the machine. Use a marker or other means to mark the front end of the pump cover to ensure correct orientation during reassembly later. Remove the pump cover assembly including cover, gasket and screws and safely set them aside to a clean area. If there is sludge in the bottom of the pump reservoir, remove the pump from the machine and clean it out with solvent as described in your operating manual's hydraulic pump section. Next we're going to remove the cylinder cap. Keep pressure on the cap with your hand as you remove the three screws. Now release the pressure of your hand slowly so the compressed spring does not suddenly pop out. Remove the cap and spring and set it aside. Next, remove the side access panel near the machine's base. Grasp the lower section of the clamp rod with vice grips. Now, Unscrew the clamp rod hex jam nut within the cylinder. Then, ungrasp the lower section of the clamp rod. Next, pull the rest of the cylinder up and off the clamp rod. Examine the piston and the two quad rings within the cylinder. The cylinder O-ring in the base of the assembly rarely needs replacement. If it is deemed to be necessary to replace the quad rings or the O-ring, Follow the hydraulic cylinder inspection and repair instructions in your operating manual. For this demonstration, we are not replacing the quad rings or O-ring, nor are we removing the piston from the cylinder. To continue, on the upper end of the hydraulic clamp rod, check for worn guide bearings by applying pressure to the clamp rod with your hand, front to back and side to side. Just like we tested earlier with the cylinder, if the clamp rod can be moved more than 1 32nd of an inch in any direction, you should replace worn guide bearings. To replace the upper guide bearing, unscrew the bearing from the unit and lift off the clamp rod. 
slide on the new bearing in the reversed manner. Now finger tighten the upper guide bearing screws. Then give each an additional 360 degree tightening with a wrench. To replace the lower guide bearings, work through the access hole near the base of the machine and drive out the roll pin on the clamp rod collar. Slide the collar low enough to raise the clamp rod out of the bottom guide bearing. Unbolt the lower guide bearing from the unit. Replace and secure the new lower guide bearing to the unit. Please note that the front and rear bolts on each guide bearing need to be equally tight. If screws or bolts repeatedly loosen during operation, use a little Loctite. To replace the clamp rod in your testing screen, working through the access hole near the base of the machine, you first drive the roll pin out of the clamp rod as we did earlier. But this time, lower the collar until the clamp rod is free from the collar. The clamp rod will be unrestricted and will drop through the lower guide bearing. Next, loosen the upper and lower guide bearing screws. Now pull the clamp rod up and out of the separator. Before we reassemble the clamp rod, it is important to note that you do not retighten the guide bearing screws until later. Slide the new clamp rod down through the separator to rest within the lower guide bearing. Return the clamp rod collar and set the roll pin. Now we're going to mount the cylinder to finish installing the clamp rod. Grasp the lower section of the clamp rod with vice grips. Now finger tighten the upper guide bearing screws. Then give each screw an additional 360 degree tightening with a wrench. Slide the cylinder and base assembly onto the upper end of the hydraulic clamp rod. Next, raise the clamp rod and install the jam nut and tighten. Unclamp the lower section of the clamp rod. Insert the cylinder spring and place the cap on the spring. Apply downward pressure on the cap as you secure the three cylinder cap screws to the cylinder. Bolt the lower guide bearing until secured to the unit. Please note that the front and rear screws and bolts on each bearing need to be equally tight. Reattach the hydraulic hoses. Fill the pump reservoir with hydraulic fluid to within a quarter inch from the top. Once you have confirmed the hydraulic oil is a quarter inch from the top, reinstall the pump cover assembly in the same orientation as it was before its removal. Pump up the pressure on the hydraulic system with short strokes on the pump handle. Now release the pressure by moving the handle all the way towards the front of the machine. Next, remove the pump cover and add more hydraulic oil, if necessary, to fill the pump reservoir to within a quarter inch from the top. Once you have confirmed the hydraulic oil is a quarter inch from the top, reinstall the pump cover assembly. Now we're going to bleed the air out of the hydraulic system. Loosen the connections between the hoses and the cylinders by unscrewing the swivel connections slightly. Pump the hydraulic system until the oil appears at the loosened connections. Now retighten the swivel connections. Once tightened, pump the hydraulic system to confirm that all the fittings are free of leaks. If the fittings leak, use hydraulic joint compound to create a seal between each leaky fitting and the pump or cylinder to which it is attached. Now return the top and side covers and the pump handle grip. After fully reassembling the unit with covers installed, run the unit empty for a few minutes. The testing screen should run freely and quietly. For any questions on the hydraulic system of your testing screen or for any Gilson product, please contact your Gilson technical support team.